from the skies to the surf. We now introduce you to one of South Florida's fastest growing sports, spearfishing. Celebrate South Florida's Angela Sacitano takes us on a ride to one of the area's most lively, where people not only swim with the fish, they hunt them. Ah, there's nothing like being on a boat in South Florida. The cool breeze, salty smell of the Atlantic, not a care in the world as you coast along the water. But if you prefer a little action, then under the water is where you might want to be. Spearfishing is Fort Lauderdale resident Adrian Winchell's life. It's hard to explain all the different emotions and physiological things that go through your body. To some, Winchell might seem like the ultimate daredevil diver. Spearfishing now for more than 30 years, he ventures the ocean with just a spear, his mask and fins. Absolutely no tank, holding his breath the entire time, all while hunting most cunning creatures. There's absolutely no way that you can outswim a fish. You can sometimes outbox them, but you cannot outswim them. The sport of spearfishing is growing in popularity in South Florida. Half of all local certified scuba divers now spear. Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties even boast their own spearfishing clubs. Today, we're getting a clear picture of what the sport is all about and also ending some of the misconceptions. But before we get to this, Let's start back at Coastal Marine Dive Shop in Dania Beach. We need to learn more about these spears. Shop manager Brian Kundrell clues us in. For basic spear fishing, we recommend banded guns. They're easy to use, they don't lose their power underwater, and basic operation is simple. You just pull the bands back, get these off, and you're ready to shoot fish. The loading a gun is simple. You're not supposed to load it ahead of time where a lot of people cheat on their own boats. And we, we keep these bands loaded as we're, as we're swimming. And then when we happen upon a fish, you just take aim and you shoot. And you want to be within five feet away. This is an excellent gun for a beginner. All right, spear is only half of the word spear fishing. We need to find some fish. And off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, you can't ask for a better environment in the coastal United States. First stop, one of the area's many natural coral reefs. This particular area is about a mile, mile and a half off the beach. It's what we call the third reef. And it's a abrupt change in the bottom structure where the reef comes up about 12 to 15 feet from a sandy bottom. Very prolific with holes, a lot of uh, game fish, a lot of small fish. Of course, the game fish follow the small fish. Beautiful, a lot of light. The guys suit up, anxious of their first dive of the day. While Kundrel and fellow diver Mike Russo load their scuba gear on, Winchell doesn't need it. He prefers to free dive. No air tank. He'll be using only the air in his lungs. Winchell jumps in and the others follow. They're off in different directions with their guns and nets in hand. While the others completely submerge, Winchell stays on the surface until he finds the right fish. It's very exhilarating. Uh, of course, when you see a fish from the surface, you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if I can, if I can get close enough to it or if the fish is going to be too wary and keep its distance. And as you take the breath and go down and down, as you get a little closer, your, your heart starts racing a little bit, thinking, well, maybe I'm going to be successful this time. Adrian's been underwater now for two and a half minutes. He says this is something he's practiced for years. The only way we're able to monitor is by following the yellow buoy out there. I can go out all day without having to bring tanks, so I don't have to have the weight with me. It's unencumbered. Uh, the physical challenge of breath holding and kicking and getting close enough to the fish, I enjoy that, and the freedom. While Winchell makes his way back to the surface to catch his breath, Mike Russo is busy on the other side of the reef. With his tanks, he might swim a little slower, but he has the luxury of staying under longer, and the patience pays off. We probably had 30, 40 foot of visibility on a horizontal plane. Um, the current was rather strong, and you, could, you can identify that because of the amount of sea fans that are being bent over. So in order for the spear fisherman to spearfish, he has to swim into the current just as a fish would. 
a lot, it's physically a lot more exhausting. After about 45 minutes, the guys make the boat, take their fish out of the bag and get them quickly on ice. A few snapper and hogfish, but not as productive as they would like. Two nice fish, probably uh, mutton snapper in the five to six pound range and the grouper eight to ten pound range. It was nice. You don't always get everything that you see. The perk of diving in South Florida is that if one reef isn't giving you what you want, you simply move to the next. About 15 minutes north of Fort Lauderdale Beach, and this time only about three-quarter mile off the coast, we find another natural reef. The guys don't waste any time suiting up and jumping in. Winchell takes his kayak this time to hold his cooler. He hopes to fill with fish. Within minutes, he's holding his breath and making a dive. In the beginning, when I very first began my spearfishing through free diving, I have difficulty holding my breath. I feel comfortable. I don't feel as relaxed. I don't, I can feel my heart beating. Later on, I start forgetting about the terrestrial world and you become more acclimated to the water world. Your heart rate slows down. You're much more relaxed, slow. You move with the currents of the ocean. And I think that not only makes you relaxed, but it helps you get more fish because they don't feel as threatened. The vast colors of the ocean are overwhelming at times for Winchell. Just about every color in a box of 200 Crayola crayons you'll find under the ocean. And it's quiet, nothing but the sound of your feet kicking and the snap of your gun. After an hour or so of diving, the guys make their way back to the boat. This is probably one of our best eating fish in the ocean. This is called a hog, H-O-G, hogfish. This is another species of hogfish, about the same size. This particular fish is called a mutton snapper. Very delicious eating. Uh, difficult to spear, very wary, stay their distance. A little bit more respectable mutton snapper. Same variety, good eating. This particular, particular fish is a pelagic ocean swimming fish, free swimming. It's a mackerel. Not quite as desirable as the others, but it'll do. The beauty of it all, it's what Winchell says it's all about. People, this, it's always not what I come back with. Even if I go out there and come back with very little or nothing, it's almost as if I paid my admission to SeaWorld and was there all day. Because the whole time I'm traveling in the water, I'm seeing all kinds of life, and I'm finding new areas that I can go hunt at another time. So there's always something new. Those guys may not have come back with much, but they assure us that it's here at the end of the day, but the experience of being in one of the Earth's most mysterious places that has them hooked. For more information on spearfishing or to schedule a trip, contact Coastal Marine Dive Shop in Dania Beach, 954-923-2388.